Yeah, that's what I heard. Maybe we'll do that as well. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Hey, I'll turn. We're going. I'm um, doing really well. Um, today was okay. Uh, I started doing some, um, uh, what is that thing called? Apache Spark stuff. So I might have, I might start getting into some of that here in a little bit. I built a, a big Spark plus cluster today over a bunch of nodes and ran like stupid examples against it. But I have some users who are interested in doing it. So I think it'll be good to have it figured out on the cluster um but other than that same old same old we did hit 200 followers though while we were gone so chai t-rex and pfdn 75 put us over 200 so that's pretty sweet i don't know really what it means um i mean it's something it's a milestone the next milestone is going to be far away though. I've been doing like doubling, so the next one's 400. So we'll see how long that takes. It's probably going to be a while. Uh, I assume what we're going to do today is do Scott and Truey. Scott and why can't I think of the other one? Church encoding um, for trees, I guess. So this is, I mean, this is just some binary tree. Is that the right terminology for it? And then there's like, I don't know if binary implies some ordering of the leaves. I can't quite remember that, but. Each node has two branches. True. I see. Wait. Yeah. Uh, this requires a thing. So we'll just add derive functor. That should be fine. So it's binary, okay. Yeah, the I have that, um, who's the author of that book? The Data Structures book? So the plan is eventually to do that book because like data structures and, and those kinds of algorithms are, are something that I, I'm definitely really weak at. Like when, when should I choose the right data structure is something that I feel like I'm pretty weak, weak on. Okay. Oh, they do call it a binary tree in the book. I just tend to ignore um I don't read very carefully. I should, but I do not. All right, so it says tree can be written as a free monad. So, we should try and figure out how to do that. Um but I need an example because it's been a while since we've done free monads. What's up, Swarm? It's been a little while, but not terribly long. Oh, that's too far. How are you? Yeah, yeah. I read part of it already. I just haven't read. Um, I got a little stuck, and I, I think I, like, gave up. I shouldn't. Why? Oh, I, I guess I have to hit tab. Yeah. So this is just the actual implementation of free, which we are going to need. So I guess we should um,
We're going to need that. And we need an example of how to use one of these. Freestyle, maybe? Okay. We're done with this, so let's leave that open and start playing here. Alright. Can write this... Oh, also we're going to need to import free and this might complain we'll see sometimes i have to restart the um the controller oh so if you guys have any ideas for what should we should do for actually passing 200 followers i'm open to ideas like i could do a special stream on something but I don't really have a great idea of what that should be. Um, so if you have any interesting ideas, uh, let me know. One idea was um, from, I'm gonna forget the name, Active Fireball was just play a different game or something like that. Oh gosh. I mean, we could try a 24 hour marathon, but I feel like I would be really useless at that. And also I literally have no time in the next month for something like that chemical stream i'm not exactly sure what that means um i think that would be against twitch terms of service but um yeah not entirely sure all right so a free tree can be written as a free so Coding battle. Who should we battle? I like the ideas. I just I don't necessarily know exactly what they mean. I think 24 hour marathon is the most clear thus far. I mean, I, I yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, I just I don't think I could code for 24 hours, honestly. I don't think I could do it. Um, I think I'd lose my mind. Don't beat me up. Nice. Um, I don't know what we would do for like a chemistry stream. Um, honestly, I, I feel like it's a legitimate suggestion swarm. It would be good for the channel to do something like that. Like that's how people get popular. They do weird stuff like that. But, but we'd have to, I mean, it sounds awful. So to make this a free funk, well, it's already kind of in the right shape. I don't understand. Tree can be written as a free monad. What is the pattern functor? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's actually going to happen. But that's, I mean, a lot of streamers that have gotten popular are doing that. So we need like these smart constructors, right? That's the idea with the free functor style. But what is, what do I do here? What is my functor here? Isn't it already a free monad? Like it, it's defined with its own piece of recursion. Uh, what is that face? Come on, bro. Come on, what? I mean, that could work too. Oh, well, we could battle Jappy. Jappy would crush me like a joke. I don't know what come on bra is for either, but hello. I don't know what I did. What did I do? This question is very confusing to me. Because it seems to me like it's already the right shape. 
That's why I'm confused. But maybe, maybe... Maybe we need to wrap it in an, like something like this. I don't know. Tree. So what do... really wish there were answers to these questions. I don't even know where I'm supposed to go from this. Yeah, I, I don't think that's actually true. Uh, Chappie's been coding for a lot longer than I have professionally. Actually, I don't, how long have you been coding professionally, Chappie? That's maybe a better question. I realized yesterday that I've technically been coding for 10 years, but not professionally at all. All right, so the, the, let me write the question out because I, I think I'm getting stuck. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do here. Exercise 15.2. Tree can be written as a free monad. Oh, I see. Okay. To which constructor? I understand this part of the question. Which constructor in free does leaf correspond? Correspond. I can spell, I swear. 1981. Wow. Only seven years before I was born. <laughs> that's that's impressive, though. It's a long time. All right, so, like, clearly... So I think the pattern functor is just tree. Because you ha all you need is this, this recursive side, right? And these things are intrinsically recursive. So I think the pattern functor... Functor is just tree. Twenty seventeen. Okay. So I guess yeah. I've been coding for quite a while, but not not professionally at all. So I think the pattern functor is just tree. Um like if we just did type tree, yeah, tree free is just free tree. I think you can just write that. I think that's correct. Um, and then to which constructor in free does leaf correspond? So let me get rid of this and we can just vertical. Oh, wait. Yeah, we can do F free V. And so pure is just leaf, I guess, because it's only one thing. Seriously? I feel like this, uh, this thing that's like right here is the reason that I get this screen tearing, actually. Because it's usually only in this line as far as I, I can see. But I still actually don't know what you guys see on your side, so... Um, anyway. So, okay. The leaf is just pure. And the free is just... Is just the... The recursive component, so that's just node and tree. So I think... That's it, but I'm not even entirely sure. We can just type something down here. So leaf 
corresponds to the pure constructor. That's like the end in this case. This is kind of a weird question, I feel like. All right, anyway, so um, this next part is about applicative. Uh, we'll just write it in here. Leaf, leaf, f. T, f map, f, t. Node left, right. T, node. T, r, t. Um, yep, and then you can also write the monad instance tree. I've already written these, so don't, I don't feel particularly interested in doing it again. Uh, although it's probably really intuitive if I just thought about it for like four seconds. Mm, node can't type today, apparently. Probably this, right? Oh, yeah. Because we're just basically recursing through the list or the the tree and applying F to every leaf. Okay, interesting. I still want to know what that that random emoji was for, or what are these things called? They're called. Come on, bro. Emote. There we go. I'm not old, I swear. Um, okay, so the this function, I'm not exactly sure where we're going for reference. Um, I'm just kind of writing some code in here from the book, and we'll we'll see where we end up. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I suppose this is going to construct a tree keep writing lead for some reason this looks funky I haven't thought about it like this before Oh no, not another one. Just don't tell me what that one's about. And then, it'll be, then we'll be consistent. That's totally fine. <coughs> Hang on. <coughs> okay. I think we're okay. What is this supposed to do? Interesting. I wouldn't have guessed this works. We should probably make sure that it works. Um, I think that we can literally just... Oh no. Oh no. We've started a trend. I hate it. I hate it so much. Alright, so if we do full tree, I hate it. Oh well. First of all, I don't have a termination condition because for some reason I wrote full there. Not exactly sure what happened there. 
There we go. That's fun. Oh, I see. This, this is the recursive bit. That's what builds up the outside. And then this is the, the, the final node. So this is like the, the leaf at the end. Okay, I, I think I see what's going on here. Interesting. Very cool. Or it's something. What is this? You're sleepy? You don't understand. I'm very confused. Uh, okay. So full tree produces left nested binds. Yeah, that's what I was actually thinking that this something is like seemingly wrong with this. Oh my lord. Rats now? The emotes are out of control. They don't mean anything to me. Um, okay, so this is problematic because by constructing each call to the bind function has to traverse the entire structure until it gets to the leaves. As a result, we are traversing the same part of the structure over and over uh, in the same way that left nested concatenation in reverse forced us to traverse the same part of the list several times. Unfortunately, the problem is not in the specifics of the tree data type. Here is the definition of bind for the free monad as introduced in chapter 13. Uh, we had that open here in a second, or a little bit ago. Uh, it's right there. Uh, this shape, the shape of this function um, closely matches the one for tree, right? It's kind of the same idea anyway. Bind F. Uh, we just do it with L. Oh my lord. Shiny. Yikes. Oh no. Okay. No. Okay. Just gonna keep reading. Um. Okay, so we'll use the same tricks apparently uh, from the list case to try and solve this left nested bind problem, I guess. Ooh, I like the little ghost. That one's super cute. I need to get good emotes. I don't know what to make though. The only one I have a good I the only one I have an idea for is the Hodor, the golden squirrel, but that doesn't really mean anything as an emote. It would just be kind of cute. Okay, so anyway, we're in 15 codensity. All right. Here is the data type that solves our problems with left nested binds. Wonderful. Something I'm going to have a lot of trouble with, I bet. Uh, codensity. Dentistry. That's what I should have wrote. That would have been fun. Density. Did I spell it right the first time? Let's sh shape this up a little bit. Chrono, thank you so much for the five months. Five months. You're insane. Thank you very much. It's very nice of you. We hit 200 followers. That puts us at four subs. Very nice people. Really appreciate you. How are you today? I feel like I haven't seen you in a while either. People are busy. I get it. I'm busy. B. So this looks like... Right, you were writing a language. You did show me that at one point, I'm pretty sure. But I don't remember what it looks like. Why did you give up? Just taking too much time, or...? Oh boy, this looks this looks pretty f pretty difficult. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's not a not a trivial chat task, that's for sure. Um I kind of would like to do that too, but 
it's just it's time consuming. I think what I would really like is just essentially Python with types. That would be nice. I'd be okay with that. And not not like the types that it has now, just for reference, if that's not clear. What is K? It's this M here. So it's just some... Why is it not required to be a monad? Oh, we're defining it. I get it. Um, okay, so... F map, F, codensity, M. Different K. Avoid lambda. Yeah, I mean, this is just k.f. All right. So this is k, which looks just like a bind type function. I mean, this is basically bind. So M is our function from before. F is an A to B function. And K K takes a B and embeds it. Right. K takes a B and embeds it. So we first convert our A to a B and then embed it in um, M. Uh, I didn't even know I wrote that um, that response from Muba. That's hilarious. Uh, thank you so much. That thousand bits is kind of a lot. I think it's like, like 10 bucks. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, okay, so we convert an A to a B, we embed that into our, our MB. Yeah, I didn't even know it was there. Uh, so that's awesome. Kind of nice. I don't know that it's kind to call you insane, but that's kind of the, t I mean, I don't know why you would give me money. <laughs> but it's appreciated. Where'd my cursor go? Oh, okay. And then, uh, reminder what M is. Okay, yeah, so that's fine. I think this makes sense. Kind of looks a lot like free. Well, a little bit like free, I suppose. No, not really. It's different. That's okay. I think we're done with this, actually. I didn't want to yell into the mic there. I'm pretty sure I have the right uh, filter for that, but I can't remember even what that's called. Why do we change the names? Like, why is this all of a sudden codensity F? Like, it's codensity K, codensity F, codensity M. I don't understand why. Let's just call it K again. It doesn't matter what it's called. Okay. Not that arrow, that's for sure. What is that? Is that just dot F? 
Er, sorry. No. I don't know what that is. Codensity F. Codensity X. Like BFR. Where does that come from? F. I don't. Too many parentheses. A, B, X, Y, B, F, R, A, A, B, Y. Uh, right. So this is just B, F, R dot A, B. Files. Okay. Instance. Monad. Codensity. I don't know why they're s switching between these things. We don't need a return. It's the same as pure. Uh, I think there was recently a proposal to just remove return entirely. Did anybody else see that? seems like it would be reasonable to define this hierarchy like completely it's mostly fixed like you don't have to define return anymore but uh, it just defaults to being pure anyway Okay, so let's think about this a little bit. All right, so our BFR is going to be a bind function. Yeah, so I mean, this looks pretty similar to this one. It's just that our, our function, again, is embedded inside of a codensity. So... Why does it come on the outside? Um, maybe it's not. I, I'm not entirely sure how the proposal is worded. Um, I, I I can't even remember offhand, but there there is a proposal in the GHC proposals GitHub, as far as I'm aware about the new order of this. And it's, I guess it's going to change a little bit. Or, I mean, if the proposal is accepted. It's literally an AB function. What's this thing again? Right, we, we have to convert A to B and then to a monad. So this thing, this component here, if I'm correct, no, it's not quite the same. I was thinking that this here would be the same as this here, but it's not. It's close, kind of. They're all flipped, I don't know. I'm trying to make comparisons between the two and it's not helping. Um. Anyway, clearly X is some sort of uh, binding operation, and so is BFR. Um, and then, apparently we can apply F to this. I'm not entirely sure. This is like one of those ones that I really need to write down in, on pen and paper for me to understand it. Like just looking at the types here is not gonna help me. I still need to do that with free, actually. I haven't done that. I need to do that at some point. So we'll see how far we can get here. Um, so it says this data type forms a monad regardless of the type constructor M given as the argument with only this code to judge 
what we have here just looks like one more case of pointless type trickery. Uh, let, us, let us set our goal to convert a code density MA into a regular MA. This makes code density more useful once we consider the argument M to be a monad. Okay. So it's so dry here today. Oh yeah, did you get did you get nasty weather swarm? Weather was really nasty today. Code density. A. That's interesting. Uh, towards AI in a meaningful way. So, I mean, AI is a pretty broad term, but the thing that looks most exciting from, from my standpoint is this, but as far as I know, it's not quite ready yet. So, this in here, that's not going to work. So, this is like deep neural networks, um, but it... From what I can see so far, it's more, it's just like defining networks. So you would define correct networks and then I guess convert them to have PyTorch code. Not entirely sure. But I would like to do an end to end machine learning project with Haskell completely. But I don't know how to train these models once you have them. Like maybe, maybe you, it's not entirely clear to me how that's supposed to work. Uh, there's a ton of code, or there's a, a good amount of examples, but nothing, as far as I can tell, from like end to end. Um, I don't know. So that's some image processing stuff. It's it's a a automatic wrapper around the PyTorch API that adds some extra compile time checking. That's my understanding. But yes, more or less, it's it's just an API into PyTorch or Torch, whatever, whatever they're calling it. OK. fun okay it says now we start to see the similarities to the difference list transformation first we use a function instead of a value of the free data type Second, we build new computations by partially applying. Are we almost done with this chapter? By partially applying the operation. Uh, Oh, there's there's a, a paper uh, I'm gonna butcher this name maybe Voigtlander from 2008 have we learned what it is yet um, no I don't know what a codensity is uh, it clearly represents something in category theory because 
there must be a density and a co-density. Um, but I don't know what they are. And there's really not much more explanation beyond um, beyond this. But we're going to talk about the... Um, it looks like we're going to talk about the monad-free interface, which uses co-density, or a monad-free interface. It, yeah, it's just like another way to write the, the free monad, I guess. And it, it doesn't have this left binding problem that's slow. It's supposed to be fast, apparently. Um, also, hi, Strager. How's it going? Did you end up fixing your disk? Typically, when I have problems like that, I, I always boot into Arch Linux. Just fix them. I wasn't sure if you were able to fix. Hopefully you were. Huh. Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt to uh, to fix that. You can always pull the disk out and mount it to another computer, right? I don't. Oh, well, I don't know what you're working on. Is it a laptop or whatever? I assume you can do things like that. But you were trying to do it on stream, so it's a little more complicated, I suppose. Um, maybe we'll learn more about what a codensity is when we get into it for category theory. But I, I mean, I don't fully understand. Doubly encrypted. Eesh. Why is it doubly encrypted? Are you are you paranoid? Or I mean, it's probably a good idea, but I I assume it's a good idea. Weird. It's really strange. I didn't know that. Although, to be fair, I didn't know that Mint was still that popular. Yeah, the only thing that's encrypted on this machine is the swap space, as far as I understand. By default, anyway, you can, you can encrypt whatever you want. Mm, okay, anyway, uh, we'll keep going. So we have the, this is the next interface. M implies F. I think this required here. Let's also do this. Excuse me. That's actually a good question. I'll turn. Oh, right. We need, um, Probably need more. What? Functional dependencies. Right. Okay. Uh, I gotta type some of this out and then we can talk about it. There's a lot of typing in this chapter thus far. Or, well, for these sections. I'll read that in a second. All 
I'm not going to understand this right now. Okay. You parted reported the partition is encrypted with Lux. I unencrypted and mounted the partition and discovered that my home directory was further encrypted. Decrypt. Seems like a good idea. Okay. Avoid using Lambda. Yeah, so this can just be um, this H, I believe. We could also write like flip run codensity H, but it's probably easier to read that way. Um, but again, this doesn't really mean a ton to me right now. Um, I mean, this kind of looks familiar. These are a little trickier to me. I I'm probably going to sit down, hopefully, hopefully next week. Actually, I'll probably sit down at the end of this book and go through these implementations again and try and write some of the, the recursive components on pen and paper with small examples and try to, like really understand what this this all means there's not a lot of um exercises in the book at this point so i don't know there's also cases where like i don't fully recognize the potential of what I'm writing so that's not helpful I think somebody pointed that out last time is like you need to you need to write more examples of what you're what you're working with and that's probably also a good idea just like playing around with what I'm doing more carefully improve what does this mean Well, that's interesting. That's kind of cool. We can choose what type we want here at the call site. Kind of neat. Okay. Uh, functor F add M one add free. How does codensity M so I think let's see here. So if we look at lower, right, we have this this codensity M A. And I guess all we're doing here. How does this work? 
Must think carefully. So M must be a monad free. Yeah, I mean, so this, that thing implies, yeah, I see, okay, okay, I mean, that's, that's all I see is why it type checks right now, but I don't, I don't exactly also know how I use it. Right, what is what am I doing with improve? But I guess that's the It's like it's really lower. I shouldn't think of it as improve. It's just pulling the monad out of the code density. So right, we're gonna create this right nested code density thing to deal with the speed of like binding here like this is slow so we're using the lower at the end right so we're gonna have like a co-density of this something i think and then that's just gonna get us our our monad back or our node i guess in this case our node of a or tree of a excuse me I don't I don't really know. This is insane. Like this stuff is really hard. This is really really hard stuff. I don't know. Maybe we should just stop this chapter and like come back to it later. It's really hard. Yeah, like all, free monads don't fully fit in my head right now either. So um, that's kind of problematic. This is really, really hard stuff. Hey, how's it going? I don't know what to do. Like the next the next section is showing the church and scott encodings for the free monad. And they look hard. Everything looks really hard in here. <laughs> Apparently parse Parsec has a free mode in it that's a Scott encoded parser or a, a Scott encoded free monad, I guess. Looks really hard. Um, okay, so let, let's. I, I. Okay, we need to write some stuff here because. Nice. What's it doing back there? Just hanging out? Is it eating crab apples and getting drunk? I was talking about that with somebody recently. It's very funny to me that they do that. So. Fair enough.
Mm, that's not really what I mean. What's the... So the, this other section is diving into theory. What do we think about this? I mean, that's probably pretty reasonable. Do we really want to do that either? Probably not. Definitely not. All right, I think we're done with this book. Um, I think we're done with this book. So, um, we've reached a point in this book that I just don't, I don't get it. Um, I don't know how to get it yet. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's basically like the reason that this whole thing exists is is that oh i i missed commander your 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 statements there yeah so like the the whole motivation for this chapter is like uh free monads uh, are are slow like the, the intuitive definition of free monads are slow and there's basically uh scott and church encoded why well, i don't know exactly which one they use um version of free monads that's much faster so they turn they showed us this sort of left binding um list problem so if you like write a naive implementation of reverse uh let me just th that's like the most obvious example i guess so if you write a naive version of list um Wait, this is just append reverse right you're using this append function and this append function is really really slow so you're you're basically traversing the uh the structure of the list multiple times and so this is really really slow and this is essentially how the free monad behaves apparently so um you need to understand first free monads i feel like you need to understand them deeply um including the performance right which i haven't even run into yet and then you have to understand this sort of church and scott encoding entirely and i would say i'm still weak with that as well um and then they go off into basically somewhere where i just i i can't even follow anymore um maybe when we discuss co-densities and densities in the uh, category theory for programmers book this will help me but it does not currently help me and like the mechanics of this are just i mean they're they're pretty baffling like at first glance i mean you look at the types the types clearly work um but like why do they why do they hate, behave this way yeah yeah so i didn't know maybe you didn't know this or but we, we're doing a like a book club for category theory for programmers um it's hard that's really hard too because it's it's very abstract um but yeah we're trying to do that as well i think it's going okay but i feel very stupid when we're doing that but eventually we're going to talk about co-density. I mean, I know what, like, why the, the co is in front of density, but that doesn't help with trying to fully understand what we're, what we're doing here. But essentially we're turning a left bind type problem like this or reversing a list into a, a right bind problem. And yeah, that's the goal here. Um, but it hurts my head. And I don't know what to do.
So I think we're done. We're done with this book, like, totally. So today, we did two things. We hit 200 subs, or tub, jeez, could you imagine? 200 followers, and we got 1,000 bits, and a, another sub, and we finished this book, I guess. Because I don't know what to do. Yeah, could you imagine? Um, I could stream professionally. Actually, that probably still wouldn't. That still wouldn't be enough, but um, anyway. Yeah, and we're, yeah, we're done with this book, I think. We're done with this book. I'm losing, I'm losing interest because it's just way, way too... It's way over my head.